Hello, so in this tutorial series we're going through the process of modeling a game character in 3ds Max and bringing it into the Unity game engine. At the end of the last video we had our arm modeled out and in this video we're going to start modeling the hand. I'm going to split this hand video into two sections because the hand is the most complicated area to model in a body in my opinion anyway. Um, I think it's more complicated than the face even so I'm going to split this into two videos and hopefully keep them both reasonable length then rather than having one very long video so to get this started what we're going to do is go into our front view and just start off modeling so I'm going to start with a cylinder and we're going to model the finger so what I'm going to do is draw out a cylinder roughly the size I want the finger to be so about this diameter we're using six sides here instead of the eight we used for the arm the reason for this is since we're going to have five fingers including the thumb um, by the time we get up towards the wrist we're going to have a lot of edges that we need to connect to the arm the arm has eight edges at the minute so when we connect all these fingers and start moving up the palm we're going to be up somewhere near 20 sides and we're going to have to get that down to as close to eight as we can so really starting off with say if we started off with eight sides in the cylinder which would make a more rounded finger um, but we'd end up with nearly 30 edges that we have to cut down to eight which is far too many so what I'm going to do is just start with six sides and I'm going to rotate this down and put it roughly here just to get the first length of the finger that I need to get so I'm just going slightly longer than this finger so if this finger was straightened out it'd be maybe about this length um, we're not going to be using the reference image for this though because as you can see the hands are in a very kind of odd shape so we can't really follow the reference to get everything we can't see enough of the hand to do anything really and the same with the left view if we look we can't see parts of the hand so instead of using that I'm just going to model that finger entirely without a reference so what I'm going to do is isolate this finger so we don't have anything else in our view and I'm just going to rotate it 90 degrees to put it pointing straight out so now what we have is if the palm of the hand was here this would be the tip of the finger here and this is the top of the finger so with this I'm just going to apply this material first so we start with this and to get us started I'm just going to convert this to an editable poly and now I need to make some connections so I'm going to put in where the knuckles are first so the first knuckle of the finger is back here at the end of the palm so we're not going to model this on the finger yet what we're going to do is model the middle knuckle and the knuckle near the tip of your finger so I'm just going to add two connections for these so here's the two connections now the finger is split up into three sections if you look at your own finger you can see that and um, this section here is the longest then this section is slightly shorter and then this section is a bit shorter again so what we're going to do is just pull this up here till we have something like this so this one is the longest then this and then this is a good bit shorter so I'm going to even pull this up a bit more to make that even shorter I think so now we have this um, what I'm going to do is just model the fingertip now I'm going to delete this back polygon because we don't need that but on this side what I'm going to do is inset this polygon so I'm going to drag this down until we get this inset here and then in the left view I'm going to just pull it out a bit so something like this 
Now the tip of the finger, it's flatter on the top than it is on the bottom, so I'm going to pull this up a little bit. There is a little bit of a curve at the top though, so I'm going to leave a slight angle there. But as you can see, there's much more of a curve down the bottom. So next thing I'm going to do is inset again. And this time I'm going to just do any old inset. This size doesn't matter. So what I'm going to do is hold down control and go to vertex. And it'll select all those vertexes that were in that polygon. So now all I'm going to do is right click and collapse those into a single vertex. So now we've got these six triangles on the tip of the finger. And I know you'll have heard probably that triangles are a bad thing and you should avoid them, but there's some times where triangles are just either necessary or they're just fine. They don't act, it doesn't really matter if you have them. And this is one of those places where it's not going to actually matter at all that these are triangles. So all I'm going to do now is pull this out again and pull it up a bit to kind of shape the tip of the finger a bit better. So now we have this shape and I'm going to pull this back a little bit and not up yet actually. So now we have this and um, what I'm going to do next is select this edge loop and this edge loop and we're going to do the same as we did with the uh, elbow which is chamfer these and we're going to bring the chamfer amount down to roughly there and we're going to put this middle section back in again so we're going to have two segments and once we have this what I'm going to do is scale this on the X just to pinch this in at the bottom a little bit and the same with this one so we have roughly this shape then I'm going to grab these middle vertices and just move these up slightly. So this gives the indent on the bottom of your finger. So when these are being uh, rigged and actually deformed, the polygons are going to know which way to go. So they'll know it wants to bend in this way. If I had it straight, it might be sure if I want it to go out this way or in this way. And we don't want it to go out that way. So. We're just going to give it a bit of help and move those in so it knows which way we want it to go. So now I'm just going to go to the top view and I'm going to scale this section in on the X just very slightly. This is just to give the knuckles a bit of shape. Um, if you look at, at your finger from the top you'll see your knuckles stick out a bit on these edges. So I'm just going to move them out and then this back one I'm going to leave for now. I'm just going to finish moving these first. So I'll move this one in as well. Again not much just to give a hint of a shape there. Same with this. Move this in a little bit. Now what I'm going to do is move these in as well just to taper the tip of the finger and now what I'm going to do is grab this and in our left view I'm going to scale this. I'm going to scale it a bit on all axes and then a bit more just on the Y. And now I'm going to move it down a little bit just so this angle at the bottom is more than this one because the bottom of your finger kind of starts when it gets near the palm it kind of comes down like this whereas the top doesn't go up as much at all. So now we have this, I mean you can do the same thing here where you pull this up a little bit but I'm not going to do that because if you look at your finger when it's out straight the knuckles don't really stick up, or at least mine don't anyway. So what I'm going to do is just leave that for now and again in the left view I'm going to just add the last bit of detail we need which is going to be ring all these edges and then one more connection so just one segment here in each of those and all I'm going to do with these is grab all the top vertices that I just made and just pull them down very slightly just again to give it a kind of wavy shape which your finger does have and these ones now I'm going to have to pull down a bit because your finger doesn't go up at the end like that 
it actually stays pretty flat so I'm just gonna grab all these I think and pull them down a bit more so something like that and maybe pull these ones out a bit because this is going to be where the nail is so I'll just move that back and move this kind of somewhere like that again this is just kind of shaping it so the tip of the finger looks more like a tip and you can move these down if you want to give the palm of the finger a bit of shape as well I'm going to just move them down very slightly so now we have this general shape and the last thing I'm going to do is just hold down shift and select this loop and it's only going to go to this triangle because the triangle is just going to make it terminate the loop so I just want those ones anyway then I'm going to hold down control and go back to vertice mode and scale these on the X so I'm just going to widen the top of the finger a bit just so it's a bit flatter on the top than it is on the bottom not much either again this is all very minor changes so now we have our whole finger done so what we need to do now is make the rest of the fingers so all I'm going to do is just hold on shift and drag this out and make three copies of this so we have our three fingers here now so the next thing to do is just change the size of them so I'm going to scale this one down so this is going to be the finger your first finger the one near the thumb so this is a little bit smaller than uh, your middle finger and the ring finger is kind of a little bit bigger than your first finger then the pinky finger is the smallest obviously and it's roughly that much smaller probably so now that we have all these I'm just gonna move them a little bit closer together and now what I'm going to do is go into the front view and we're just going to shape these fingers a bit um, if you look straight on on your fingers there's a kind of arch to your hand where it comes up and down again so what I'm going to do is try get that kind of shape so in my view coordinate system I'm going to just rotate this 10 degrees I'm going to leave this one I'm going to rotate this one 5 degrees and then this one 10 degrees so now we have this kind of shape and what I'm going to do now is just move this finger down and then this one down and this one down just so we have the top of the fingers kind of arching like that maybe move these up a tiny bit something like this kind of shape is what you want now in our top view we're going to do a similar thing so I'm going to grab this finger and rotate this 10 degrees out this way I'm going to rotate this 5 degrees and then this one 5 degrees so we get this kind of slightly splayed fingers now I'm just going to do the same thing in the top view which is um, if you look at the top of your finger your knuckles are again kind of arced like this so I'm just going to roughly position these where that kind of effect is happening so I'm just going to move all these back a little bit and again I'm going to move these a little bit closer because they're getting further apart because I rotated them and now we have some shape something like this so we have all those now and they're rotated pretty well I mean they the angles on them is pretty good now so the next thing to do is just create the thumb so to create the thumb all I'm going to do is again shift and drag this over and I'm using the middle finger because it's the biggest one that I've got at the minute and the thumb is quite large so 
are quite wide anyway. So what I'm going to do is just in the left view, if you look at your thumb, this knuckle here on your thumb would be actually back at your wrist or just in front of your wrist. So we wouldn't see this sticking out when you move out your thumb. This is kind of the first knuckle you actually really see on your thumb. And then this is the other knuckle. So what I'm going to do is just delete all of these polygons. And I'm going to delete this edge loop here as well. So now we have kind of the size the thumb will be. I'm going to just move this vertically down a bit. And I'm going to delete this edge loop actually for now. I'm going to put it back in in a minute though. What I'm going to do is select all these vertices on the end and just scale this out a little bit. Just because the thumb is gets a bit wider at the bottom as well. So we can put this edge back in now. I mean, you don't even really need to put this back in because I mean the amount that this is going to change the shape is very minor. But I'll just put it in anyway for now. So now we have this and if I look at this, if I just put a turbo smooth on one of these actually, I'm going to exit isolation mode and enter isolation mode again just so I only have this finger. If I put a turbo smooth on it you can see the kind of shape it's going to be. So it's a pretty good shape for a finger. I think the side profile gives it the uh, if you look in the side profile you're going to get the best view of what it's going to end up looking like. So I'm just going to take that turbo smooth off again. And I'm going to ex exit isolation mode. And now what I'm going to do is position this thumb where I want it. So the thumb's going to be back here quite a bit. And then in the left view it's going to be down a little lower than the rest of your hand. So what I'm going to do now is just rotate it as well. So in the front view I'm going to rotate about 60 degrees. So it's quite far rotation. So at this point you mightn't be sure where the top of the thumb is because you might have kind of lost where you were. So what you can do to help tell which is the top of the thumb, where the nail would be. I mean if you look at the angles you'll know it's this bit because it's the bit that's pulled down for the nail. But what you can do to make it easier is just grab one of the, the polygon where the nail would be roughly and just delete it for now. And then you've got a hole there so you're always going to know that that's the top of the finger or the top of the thumb. So now what we're going to do is rotate it into position. So to rotate it into position what we're going to do is in the top view we're going to rotate it about 20 degrees and move it over again. And now the last rotation we're going to do is going to be in the local axis and we're going to rotate it along the Y axis here. So we're just going to pull it down a bit just so it kind of sticks out like this. So let's see, we'll pull it down 20 degrees, 15 degrees maybe. So that should be fine. So now once again we've got to reposition this. So I'm going to pull it back in a little bit and go into my left view and just raise it up slightly. And maybe move it in a bit more actually and raise it up a bit more. So it's somewhere there. I mean, if you look now, you can kind of see the shape the hand's going to be. But um, we might have to move the thumb again in a bit. It's kind of hard to position it without anything to go by. So the next thing we're going to do is just attach all these fingers and the thumb together. So to do that, just go to attach and select all these and attach them. Now I'm going to go back into isolate mode because I don't want to be seeing the reference image in the arm while I'm doing all these rotations. So 
back into isolate mode that's the isolate button down there by the way or you can press I believe alt Q or something yeah alt Q does it as well so we have all these fingers now next thing we need to do is attach the fingers to each other so to do that all we're going to do is bridge the gaps between them so these two edges here are going to get bridged together and the same with the bottom and the same with all these so I'm just going to select bridge and go from there to there here to here and just across all these gaps so there we're not going to bridge to the thumb just yet what we're going to do now is grab this border so in border mode select this border here and then in our top view we're just going to hold shift and extrude this out a little bit so this is going to be the area where the knuckles the last set of knuckles would be so I'm just going to go to scale and scale this very slightly on the on the Z just to kind of start widening the hand a little bit the hand is very flat though especially on the top of your hand you'll if you look at the top of your hand it's actually very flat so we're not going to do anything drastic I mean it doesn't come up like this so we have this now and if you look now on our with our border selected it says we've 18 edges selected so all around here this is 18 edges and if you remember our arm is only eight edges so we need to take out about 10 of these edges before we get down to the end of the arm or the end of the hand so we can connect it properly to the arm so this is kind of the hard part of the hand where a lot of people struggle is trying to you've got all these edge loops coming in same with the thumb and it just keeps increasing your edges and at some point you have to get down to 8 or 10 whatever amount you've used for your arm so it can be quite tricky so what I'm going to do to start this is I'm going to start getting rid of edges now rather than when I get further down the hand so to get rid of the first few edges what I'm going to do is go to vertex mode and I'm going to select these vertices between the fingers so this polygon here and I'm going to select the two end vertices of this polygon and I'm going to go to weld settings and I'm just going to weld these together so just pull this slider up until they snap together and then I'm going to do this with every finger so the gap between every finger I'm going to just weld and create all these triangles now we are going to get rid of these triangles they're not like the ones on the tip of the finger we are going to have to get rid of these so but for now we've got all that and if I go back to border mode you'll see we've gone from 18 edges down to 12 so we got rid of six edges there by doing that and the last thing I'm going to do now to get rid of these triangles is just go to edge mode select this edge hold down shift and ring this ring here and it's only going to ring those three edges because it's going up into a triangle then so it doesn't know if the ring goes this way or this way so it's just going to terminate the ring there which is perfectly fine so what I'm going to do is same thing here ring that and ring that and then I'm just going to go to connect and with one connection again and then I'm just going to scale this on the Z so scale it down like this to kind of give those indentations that are between your fingers and now you'll see those triangles are quads now so you can see there it's got four edges so we got rid of those triangles as well at the same time as creating a bit of shape so next I'm gonna just extrude this border out once more so hold down shift and move it up to about here maybe and now what I'm going to do is scale it out on the X very slightly again so only a minor 
angle here. Now what I'm going to do is connect the thumb. So we've got this thumb here and as you can see because we angled that at 60 degrees these two edges are pretty much at the same angle. So we're going to bridge those together. So I'm going to select the two of them and just hit bridge. And then I'm going to select the two of these and bridge this as well. And now what we can do is just move this for it to see here back a little bit. Just to kind of angle this polygon a bit more than it is at the minute. Same with this, move this back on the X and Y a little bit. And then pull it up a bit on the Z. Just to kind of start this curve that's going to go up to the hand. So now we have this, I'm just going to check if my thumb is in a good place. It's kind of in a good place. I'm going to just move it a little bit. So I'm going to select all these polygons in the thumb and just move it in a little bit more and then back a little bit more and maybe up a tiny bit as well just kind of reposition it a bit and then I'm going to select this border that I deleted before and just cap this so we've put that polygon back in so now what I'm going to do is leave this video here for now and in the next video we're going to model the palm and the top of the hand and connect it to the arm. The next video is going to be a slightly different style of modeling where we did box modeling here. In the next video it's going to be a lot of polygon modeling which or edge modeling. So I'll go into that in the next video because the next part is going to take quite a while as well. But I mean if you put turbo smooth on this again you can kind of see We've got the beginnings of a hand and it looks pretty good so far so i'm gonna leave it here and we'll be back in the next video so thanks for watching